It's great to be here. Uh, and I'm just going to share a little bit about my work on social innovation and where I'm taking my research and where I think the field uh, would benefit from going going forward. I'm trained as an organizational theorist, and so that's the perspective I bring to the topic of social innovation. And in particular, within organizational theory, I bring primarily a lens around hybridity. And by hybridity, what I mean is the mixing within an organization of core aspects of the organization. We might talk about them in org theory around uh, institutional logics, organizational forms, or organizational identities. Uh, but the mixing of identities, forms, or logics that conventionally wouldn't go together. Uh, and so in the space of social innovation, uh, and where I have looked in particular, we see this in particular around social enterprises. So organizations that are drawing in part from a social welfare orientation in the nonprofit or charitable sector, as well as uh, a commercial orientation in the for-profit or market uh, sectors. Uh, and so a lot of what I have done is look at the ways in which this hybridity shows up in social enterprises, sort of the nature of that combination, the extent to which there are sort of competing versus more complementary or compatible uh, ways in which one can bring together the social and the commercial, uh, the extent to which there is sort of a clear priority ordering or dominance of one over the other, uh, and in particular then about sort of what happens when that mixing occurs. Uh, so that's broadly the space that I've looked in. Uh, some of the work that I've tried to do is sort of tried to think about how can we situate hybridity in a broader context and think about where is it coming from, uh, both the sort of individual or internal determinants or drivers of hybridity as well as the more contextual factors in the environment. Uh, again, sort of some pieces on sort of the nature of hybridity in organizations uh, and what that looks like. Uh, and then a lot of my, or sort of, I, sort of most, if not all of my empirical work has really been on sort of the right hand side here and thinking about what are the uh, sort of both the challenges and the opportunities that arise from this mixing in organizations, and what are the types of strategies and practices that organizations and leaders adopt to uh, deal with those challenges and take advantage of, of those opportunities. Uh, so uh, I want to share with you a little bit of the empirical findings, just some highlights. I think, especially given the kind of work that I do, which is deep qualitative inductive studies, it's, it's really sort of useful to get a sense of particular studies in the sort of particular context. So I'm just going to share very high level two, uh, two different papers, and those are the key insights that came out of them, again, in this space of thinking about what are the organizing strategies for addressing the challenges and opportunities of hybridity. Uh, so the first, um, the first paper really takes off from the body of work that has emphasize the internal tensions in hybrid organizations and social enterprises in particular. And we know from a long line of work that a lot of times you get clashes and conflict inside these organizations between individuals and groups aligned with the social side or the commercial side. And so uh, the work that I've done in this area highlights the role and the value of people I refer to as pluralist leaders in mitigating and managing those internal tensions. And so in the context that I've looked at it, uh, I talk about sort of at the front lines of organizations, you often have folks who are more idealist and folks who are more capitalist in orientation, uh, and look at the kinds of practices that leaders who identify with both of those pieces uh, and work to bring those together, what do they do managerially in terms of decision making, in terms of uh, working with individuals who are coming at this from a different orientation. So that's one piece that looks at kind of the internal challenges. Uh, the other side uh, is really looking more at hybridity over time uh, and here uh, thinking about how organizations essentially what, do what you might think about as avoid mission drift, right? So not to become purely social or purely commercial in the case of a social enterprise, but really sort of move around between those two. And the key insight here that's coming out of some recent work is around what I call structured flexibility, uh, by which we mean, and this is work with Wendy Smith, we mean sort of the, the structure piece is around building out uh, what we call guardrails or sort of representatives and structures that sort of hold an organization to the commercial and the social aspects of their mission, uh, and the flexibility flexibility piece is really around the practices that they use sort of within this space that's bounded by the guardrails to explore and experiment with ways of doing both, uh, either at one point in time or as sequentially over time. Uh, so that's the, the uh, idea of structured flexibility as a means of sustaining hybridity over time. 
Uh, let me just share a few thoughts on where I'm trying to take my own work and where I think the field would benefit from going in the next few years. Um, and so the first is uh, to think about not just social entrepreneurship and social enterprise, but other approaches to organizing uh, for uh, social innovation. Uh, and I should say this work is very much inspired by a paper of Paul's where he talks about not just social entrepreneurship, but social entrepreneurship and social extrapreneurship as other forms of organizing within the broad realm of social innovation. And I think to the extent that in sustainability and social innovation, we really care about addressing problems in the world, we want to anchor on those problems, not necessarily on one organizational solution. Uh, and so for me, uh, one way in which I'm exploring this is in a project that's just starting to get going on sustainable regional food systems. Uh, and the idea here is to look not just at any one particular organization, but at a whole ecosystem of organizations. Uh, this image depicts sort of the food hub at the, at sort of the intermediary between a set of producers and a set of buyers. Uh, but looking at sort of these regional ecosystems to understand the set of organizational activities uh, and interrelationships that can build more robust, sustainable regional food systems. So that's piece one, sort of pushing beyond social enterprise where there's been a lot of really useful work, but thinking about other forms of organizing to address uh, really important social issues. Um, so the second direction that I'm taking my own work and I think uh, is useful for the field as a whole is to not be limited to hybridity as a lens, right? Even as I've built a lot of work around that lens and found it very useful, there are other conceptual lenses that we can bring to bear when we think about social innovation and addressing uh, complex sustainability and social issues in the world. Uh, and so I, th I think we want to be open to the value of other theoretical approaches and conceptual lenses. Uh, and here in my own work, I have started to play around with this a little bit in a, a new project on impact investing. And what's uh, emerging for us as we start this project, this is with a project with one of my doctoral students, uh, is the value of thinking about impact investing organizations and individuals really as intermediaries. And so we're going to be drawing, you know, potentially on a very different set of theoretical conversations around brokerage and intermediaries, not primarily or even uh, at all on, on work on hybridity. And so being open to that broader range of conceptual lenses as we work towards developing insights that are useful for addressing social problems in the world. So that's a second direction. Uh, and then the third is to think about what can we learn uh, from going beyond sustainability and social innovation that might ultimately come back and be useful for this context. So looking at hybridity, for example, in other contexts, perhaps more settled contexts where we have seen hybrid organizations for centuries, for example, uh, and other new emerging contexts. And so in my own work, this is um, not an empirical direction, but a sort of a Put, pulling together conversations exercise where I'm working with uh, a former doctoral student on a, a volume of research in the sociology of organizations to pull together studies across a range of empirical contexts, art museums, uh, it's sort of the top image, uh, healthcare, uh, public-private partnerships, just some among others that will be in the volume to think about what do we learn about hybridity in these contexts. And really the ultimate goal, you know, the, the goal of this project is twofold. One, to push the conversation on hybridity, but two, uh, in terms of thinking about social innovation and sustainability to bring these insights back in and to think uh, really sort of at the end of the day about what do we learn by looking across those other contexts uh, that can help us bring insight to sort of what I would refer to as sort of world scale problems. I have the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals pictured here. I think that's one framework for thinking about this. Uh, but the goal, I think, more broadly and what I, where I would want to challenge my own work and, and push the field is to think about how can we leverage insights across contexts uh, to really address some of these uh, world scale problems by studying the problems themselves, but also, again, looking more broadly at how these kinds of issues that come up when addressing, say, uh, hunger and these other issues, uh, how they've been addressed elsewhere and what we might bring in then to uh, look at that in this space. Mm -hmm.